We have a new toy. <laughs> we're on the air. Of course, we're not actually on the air. Every time we tell people we're doing a radio show, and they go, "Where? What channel? What station?" No, it's live. So welcome once again to another production of those thrilling days of yesteryear, a live recreation of some of your favorite shows from the golden age of radio. And this also marks, we had a late start this year, uh, but this marks our 19th season here at the Oak Park Arms, and we're really excited. <laughs> which, which also means we've done 19 Christmas stories, which is <laughs> unbelievable. And we've done a whole range of Christmas shows from dramas to comedies to uh, movies to Disney uh, stories, a whole range. And the one thing we haven't really touched upon is good old Saint Nick, the man himself who brings Christmas joy to all the happy homes throughout the world. And so we thought today we could honor Santa Claus. And we have two episodes, yeah, we've heard of him, haven't we? And we have two episodes that come back from the golden age of radio. Our first show is Life with Luigi, and it originally aired on December 14th, 1948 in which Luigi is trying to get money together to buy a present for his, this boy that he takes care of. And in the process, he goes to a department store, and there happens to be a little bit of a problem that occurs involving Santa. Can't tell you what's going to happen. You'll find out. But then we also go to visit with Phil Harris and Alice Faye. And they, Phil Harris became really a well-known band leader and also appeared on the Jack Benny Show. And then they created a spin-up program of him and his wife, Alice Faye, where Phil would kind of get into all sorts of crazy things, including one last attempt to prove to his two daughters that Santa Claus is real. And we'll find out how well that goes. And of course, while you are watching, you might close your eyes and imagine that you are in the living room of the house listening to the old Philco radio and, and imagining what's happening in your mind. Or you can imagine that you are sitting in the studio audience watching your favorite performers do their thing. Either way, enjoy as we take you back to another round of those thrilling days of yesteryear. Starring J. Carol Nash with Alan Reed. A year ago, when Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write her and tell her about his adventures. So now we look over Luigi's shoulder as he writes another letter to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mama Mia, in America is now a big Christmas shopping season. Mamma Mia, you should see the wonderful things they have here, especially for the house. For instance, in old country, when he's washing, women take a wash to the creek, stand barefoot and rub her clothes against a rock. Here in America, women take bundle to a store full of washing machines, put a wash in, fill a press a button, one, two, three, clothes that come out of clean. All a woman needs is a strength enough to put a quarter and a, a husband to carry the bundle. <laughs> A countryman, a Pasquale, who bring me here and has a spaghetti palace next door. He's doing his Christmas shopping too. But his shopping list has only one article. A husband for his fat daughter Rosa. And your son Luigi, Mamma Mia, is a number one on a Pasquale's list. Mamma Mia, that Rosa, she's a big. When Rosa step on a scale, little ticket come out with the one word. Help. <laughs> Outside of this, my antique business is not so good. I guess people like to buy new things for Christmas, and not antiques. If I have a money, I like to buy lots of presents, especially for my 12-year-old general manager, my boy Jimmy O'Connor. He's just come home from school now, and he's saying, Hello, Mr. Luigi. Hello, Jimmy. How was the school today? About the same. What's your writing? I'm a sending out of my Christmas cards. Well, who to? The first one is to a Pasquale. I make them up myself. Here, I'll read it to you. 
Uh, dear Pasquale, it's a pleasure to be here on a Christmas day. So thank you for the money that bring me to USA. <laughs> not bad. A Merry Christmas to your wife, and I'm not gonna marry Rosa. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Any more glass? Oh, uh, here's a one to Miss Spaulding. Uh, dear my teacher, Miss Spaulding, learning me is so fine. Wait and see the Christmas card I write in 49. Hey, you're doing great, boss. You know, one more. Uh, to a President Truman. Uh, dear uh, Mr. President, uh, best of wishes from me. It's a pleasure that we are both are where we want to be. Don't feel like that. Well, uh, now, Jimmy, what do you like for a Christmas? Oh, not a thing, boss. Oh, why are you different from anybody else? Everybody wants something. Well, there isn't a thing I need, boss. Jimmy. If I have a kid to talk like you, Santa Claus will go out of business. <laughs> Boss, I'm not going to let you get me anything, so let's drop it. But, Jean, what is it that you want the most that you can't get? Well, as long as I'm not going to get it, then a bike is the thing I want most. Well, it's two weeks before Christmas, and maybe Santa will bring it to you. But I got a bigger surprise for you, Jimmy. See this? Oh, no, you bought another statue. It's a more than a statue. See, is a, is a Paul Revere lamp. Beautiful, huh? How much? Sixty dollars, that's all it'll cost. No! Yes! See, is a horse. Is a little, little lantern light. Every store in town is selling. And we're buying. I can't help it, Jimmy. A Paul Revere is a brave affair. Oh, I know. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. How you know this, Jimmy? Well, every kid knows it. It's a, from a poem by Longfellow. What's well, so this Longfellow's name? That is his name, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. <laughs> it's a nice name. And maybe I sign on my Christmas cards with the three names, Luigi Bosco Bosco. <laughs> Luigi, my friend! Hello, Luigi, hello! Hello! Hello, uh, hello Pasquale. Hello, Jimmy. How's it with you? Hello, Mr. Pasquale. I got a big surprise for you, Jimmy. Yeah? But I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell Luigi. So you go, you go out the back. All right, Jimmy, go have us some milk. Oh, uh, that's a nice boy, Jimmy. I'm a feel sorry for him. Why are you feeling sorry for him? He's all right. Is he going to have a Christmas tree? I don't know. Is it going to be a stocking in a chimney? I have no chimney. You're lucky you got out of the stocking. It's absolute terrible shame. A boy like that not to have a real Christmas with all of the trimming. It's not of my fault. I do the best I can. Sure is it your fault. Is it your fault because you are single? What's a single got to do with the Christmas? The only people who's got to go to Christmas is a family people. You should see my spaghetti house on the Christmas. It's a big tree with a little silver decorations, a little bulbs, the lights. Yes, well, yeah, I like to see them. And then at the end of the life, they spell out the words. Merry Christmas? No, special Christmas at dinner, two and a half a box. <laughs> Sounds a trip. And then, then a Rosa, she sneak her down on a tippy toe early in the morning. Like, Whole house shake, she wake everybody up. <laughs> Maybe, uh... Me and a Jimmy, we come to your house. Sure, of course. Under a tree is going to be a present for you. Oh, thank you, Pesquale. Is it going to be two a single dollar bills? A green a Christmas. Well, what for two dollars? That's the price of a marriage license. I guess I'm going to have a black Christmas. And, and for Jimmy, for him, I'm going to have an electric train. He's a too big for an electric train. Oh, this one's going to be a super cheap, so just a ride for a boy his age. Even you would like to play with it. Ah, uh, that's going to be fun. Sure, sure. You, you're going to have an engine and the cars are right in your store, but the tracks. They're going to be at my house. Why? Why do you say? Because when you want to play, then you will come over to my place. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You and Jimmy and Rosa on the floor. Why do you always bring up a Rosa? And her papa, who else is going to bring her up? Please, Pasquale, we're talking about a Christmas. It's a time for happy talk, not a Rosa talk. Yeah, all right, all right. I don't press the subject, Luigi. I'm going to let things work out of themselves. Maybe Jimmy, he's a getter to like, uh, if he sees a lot of Rosa. If anybody sees a Rosa, he's got to see a lot. <laughs> you know, maybe he's even a get to call her a uh, mama. Pasquale, I'm not going to marry a Rosa. Even if Jimmy like her? 
just to think next year, what a happy Christmas he's going to have when he's a, a grandpa. And if he's a, my grandson, he's going to have everything. And what I have, Rosa. <laughs> what do you say, my son? Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> Are you in charge? Uh, si, uh, I'm a Luigi Basco. Uh, what can I do for you, lady? Uh, do you have any lamps? I have a one lamp uh, right here. Oh, my, that's original. It's Paul Revere on his horse. Well, that's all right. Uh, you like it? Oh, yes. Is it not for sale? I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> Is it not hard to understand? I just buy it for myself. I'm a crazy for Mr. Revere. But are you in business to get money? See, si, I guess you're right. I need the money to buy little Jimmy a Christmas present. Well, what are you asking for the lamp? I'm asking a sixty dollars, but if that's too much, I sell it cheap. No, that's a fair price. I'll take it. All right, lady. I take him in the back and I wrap him up. Come on, Paul. Hello, Mr. Revere. I guess you gotta take another ride. In old days, you ride on a horse. Now, Jimmy, he wants a ride on the bicycle. Can I help it, Mr. Revere? I'm a sorry. I know you only for a short time, but I already know a lot about you. You also an immigrant. But when a country needs you, you say, okay. You find soldier in a wartime. You find silversmith in a peacetime. People always remember you because of you ride in the night, and you show people lanterns light a shining. And now you go to a lady's fine house. The light on this lamp shine there, and the people will see you. And maybe they remember how you and the other fellas fight. So there's always a light shining in America. <coughs> Goodbye, Mr. Revere. Merry Christmas. Here, lady, is a Paul Revere. And here's your money, Mr. Bosco. Would you mind putting the lamp in my car? It's the first time Paul Revere's a horse ride in a car. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, and a happy Paul Revere. Mm. America, I love you. Like hey, Luigi! Excuse me, Pascale, I'm in a bigger hurry. Hey, where are you going at this time? To the department store. Why will you run in a summer place? You, you gonna buy something or you just look around? I'm gonna buy something. A tie? No, a toy. Where you get the money? Uh, just to sell the Paul Revere. Who's the Paul Revere? He's a lamb. A lamb? How much you get for this human torture? I get a sixty dollars. Sixty dollar for a lamp? People must be a crazy. Uh, no, Pesquale. If you know a Paul Revere, then you understand. But I explain. Ah, you explain. You remember Revolutionary War? It must have happened before I come here. You remember a Boston Tea Party? They don't invite me. I don't go to no party. No, no, Pesquale. It was like this. It was April 18, 1775. Paul Revere was a hey, hey, Luigi, do me a favor. Go to, go to a, the department store. Huh? By the time you finish explanation, Santa Claus is going to be back at the North Pole. <laughs> Mamma mia, it's a big store and a big crowd. I wonder where is the bicycle department. Merry Christmas, children. Merry Christmas. Uh, please, please, uh, Santa Claus. I am Danger too. Merry Christmas, everybody! A oh, Merry Christmas! Please, please, I'm looking for a bicycle. Well, uh, and you have been a good little boy all year? Uh, yes, Santa Claus. Not you, dopey scram! Please, a bicycle is not for me. It's for my boy Jimmy. He's a bicycle salesman here. See, here's my sixty dollars. Merry! Uh, probably necking with the perfume sales girl. Merry Christmas, everybody! <laughs> but where can I find the... <clears throat> hey, uh, I mean, uh, maybe I can help you. Uh, thank you. Are you a bicycle salesman? Not exactly. No. I want to buy a bicycle for my boy Jim. Oh, that's fine. And here's my money. Oh, you shouldn't be waving it around like that. Uh, put it in your coat pocket. Oh, thanks, uh, Mr. Thanks. Hey, hey, look, look, you got some of Santa's whiskers on your coat. Uh, you better <coughs> let me give you a quick brush. Oh. Oh, oh, uh, thank you. Uh, you're a really nice fella. I guess my clothes not so clean, huh? Hey, you're clean now, I think. I'm, uh, 
I mean, little dizzy. It's a, it's a first time in such a big stove. Yeah, I guarantee you, you won't forget it. Oh, well, here's the salesman now. I hope you have a nice Christmas. Uh, thanks, I will. Yes, sir. Can I interest you in a bicycle? Uh, yes, I'm waiting for you. Oh, sorry. I was away for a minute. Just going over a few things at the perfume counter. <laughs> now, here's a bicycle that will give you years of service. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! How much do you intend to spend? All I have is a sixty dollars. Well, that's exactly the price of this bicycle. Automatic brakes, all chrome body, fog lights, heater, the works. Fine. I take it. Here's my sixty. Uh, Mamma mia! Is there something wrong, sir? Uh, my sixty dollars. It's a missing. Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas! It's one of America's favorite phrases, and certainly is one of America's favorite shows. It's hit the jackpot, will you? which you'll hear in just a little later tonight over most of these same CBS stations. Tonight, the jackpot will be worth $25,000 to the listener or studio guest who cracks the mystery of the secret sentence. And if they all fail, the jackpot total will climb to $27,000. Tuesday night's always great listening on CBS, so stay tuned for Hit the Jackpot a little later. And now for the second act of Luigi Vasco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And I saw Mamma Mia, I lose my sixty dollars, and Jimmy lose a beautiful bicycle with shiny metal, beautiful times, and a little piece of fur on the back. I think it's to keep the boy's feet warm when he rides on a cold day. I feel very sad inside, but I hope the man who finds the money is a poor man, and he buys a bicycle like this, for he's a little boy. So salesman, he take me to store detective, who says it to me. Uh, now think hard, Mr. Vasco. Are you sure, sure you came into the store with sixty dollars? I'm sure, Mr. Detective. I got the money from a Paul Revere. And another thing, I. <laughs> You got the money from who? Paul Revere. Not the guy with the horse. That's all right. <laughs> now look, mister, why do you lie down and rest a while? You know walking around these crazy crowds all day does something to a guy. Yeah, you'll feel it. Please, I, I own an antique store. And this morning I saw Paul Revere statue for $60. Oh, for a minute you had me worried. Uh, now, are you sure you came in here with the $60? Maybe you left it at home with your wife. I'm not married. Oh, that's right. Mary guy wouldn't have 60 bucks in his pocket to begin with. <laughs> uh, now, tell me, Mr. Bosco, uh, when did you first notice that the money was missing? I'm standing next to a Santa Claus. No wonder the guy keeps yelling, Merry Christmas. Uh, no, Mr. Detective, it was not a Santa Claus. Well, uh, maybe not. Um, Mr. Bosco, did, uh, did anybody brush up against you in the crowd? Uh, nothing. No. Uh, oh, oh. Only a, a one a nicer man, and he brushes off on my clothes. Uh, can you describe him? I don't remember too much. He has uh, red hair, a green eyes, a scar under his left eye. His nose is a little crooked. He wears a little orange bow tie, and uh, he had... Uh, uh, yeah, it was a polka dot. And he walked with a limp. Well, <laughs> you're not giving me much to go on. <laughs> do, you know it? do you know his name, or where he lives? He did not tell me. Oh. Please, uh, Mr. Detective, maybe you find my sixty dollars so I can buy Jimmy the bicycle. Well, I'll look around the store, Mr. Bosco. Uh, go see the manager and report your loss. Uh, thank you. You say you want to report a loss in our store? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Manager. Well, uh, <coughs> will you describe what you lost, please? Uh, yes, uh, it was a one dozen five dollar bills, all the green. With a picture of Lincoln on every bill. Yes, 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 Mr. Bosco. I'll just put down sixty dollars. Please. Uh, this money was a buy Christmas present for my boy Jamie. A beautiful bicycle with a piece on the floor. I'm on the back. sorry. I'm sorry, but of course our score can't be responsible. You, you understand? <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Ah, nice. Please. What kind of language is this from a Santa Claus? Mr. Brover, I am through playing Santa Claus in this store. But why? I am turning in my suit, my whiskers, and my Merry Christmas. Is it a question?
question of money? No, it's not the money. I have played Santa Claus at every department store, at every whistle stop in the country. Why, please. I'm an actor. I place Santa Claus with so much feeling when I kiss my wife. I think I'm kissing a reindeer. Will you please calm down and tell me what's troubling you? Please, I'm Mr. Manager, my sixty dollars. You! Keep quiet! All right, Mr. Grover, I'll tell you what's bothering me. It's the class of kids you've got here. They tear off my whiskers, tweak my nose, and the things they whisper in my ear, especially that last kid. Now, what did he ask for? What Harry James would never give up. <laughs> no, I'm through, I tell you, I'm through. I'm oh, packing up. Please, please, calm down. No, no, I've had I'm enough. Down. Oh, no. Please, please! Please, please, oh, my money. I'm sorry, sir, your money shows up. I'll let you know. Thank you. Say, say you. See? Help me off with these whiskers, will you? I'm, uh, I'm uh, sorry you decide to go away, Mr. Santa Claus. Oh, that's this crummy joint doesn't know how to treat a great artist. Last year, I played Santa Claus in the biggest department store in New York. I was so great, they held me over until New Year's. <laughs> My clippings. I think you're fine too. I had the star dressing room, a special makeup artist to do my face. Yeah. My uniform was created by a Hollywood expert. But, uh, but if you leave, the children, uh, they may be a very sad. You should see the hole I got for a dressing room. A broom closet between ladies' pajamas and men's sportswear. But, but to the poor little bambinos, and nobody here to ring a bell and have a Merry Christmas. And what have you got to be so merry about? You lost sixty dollars. Your kid's not going to get a bike. See, it's a bad thing, but not so bad as a Christmas for little kids without a Santa Claus. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. You be Santa. I am quitting. It's a Merry Christmas, a little bambinos. A Merry Christmas, a Merry Christmas. Are you comfortable on my lap, a little bambino? Oh, definitely. That's a fine. Now you tell us, Santa Claus, what do you want for a Christmas? Well, I want a set of soldiers and a drum and a wagon uh -huh. and a football well, suit fine, yeah. and a million comic books uh -huh. and skates. Oh well, that's a fine, and I'm a gonna. I'm going to get a sled, two drums, and a scooter. <laughs> well, so Santa Claus is, is going to need a truck. What is the matter, Mr. Santa Claus? Oh, well, uh, he's a lot of presents. Uh, to get all these Santa Clauses, I'm going to have to own a bed. Oh, you see, you don't have to. My father does. Oh. Now then, I want two drums uh -huh. and a pony and... It's a Merry Christmas, a little bambinos. A Merry Christmas. And what's a your name, little fella? Bud. Bud, that's a fine name. Okay, now give me the loot and let me go home. First, to tell us, Santa, have you been a good boy this year? Oh, I've been perfect. Mommy boy, real sweet nose. And now you sure you tell Santa the truth? Sure, my nose is clean. Is it not good to tell Santa Claus lies, Bud? Well, except for the time me and Baldy Harris put a stick bomb under old lady Schultz's window. Uh-huh, and uh, why you do that? Because she called a cop on us. And I want Miss Schultz, she call her the cop. Because I busted a window after she took away my pea shooter. Is it the only time that knows she's not in the cleanest, bud? Well, we got one teacher in school, and last year I used up two boxes of tax on her. Is it more dirt on her nose, bud? No, oh, just a few little things like that. You're gonna need a handkerchief like a tablecloth to make her nose clean. <laughs> I guess I don't read no presents this year, Santa. But if I had another chance, I'd make good. Well, Bud, uh, it's all right, I suppose. The important thing is that you promise to be a good boy next year. I will. Now tell us, Santa Claus, what do you want for a Christmas? I'd like a pea shooter, two steak bonds, and two boxes of bags. <laughs> it's a Merry Christmas, Bambinos, a Merry Christmas, a Merry Christmas. Uh, come, come and sit on a Santa's lap, a little girl. Now you tell her to Santa Claus, so what do you want for a Christmas? Oh, I'd like a bicycle. Me too. <laughs> you don't need a bicycle. I'm just thinking of a little boy who likes a bicycle too. Santa Claus, can I have a mama doll and a carriage and a teddy bear and two packs of bubblegum and lots of pretty dresses and I'm just super excited for Christmas.
It's a Merry Christmas, Bambinos. A Merry Christmas. Oh, and here's Santa Claus, Robert. Now you just step over there and tell him what you want for Christmas. <laughs> Go on, Robert. Don't be shy. Robert. Uh, please, uh, please. Uh, I talked to him, a lady. Uh, hello, Robert. Hello, Santa Claus. You want to touch your Santa's whiskers? Uh, go ahead, touch. He's a nice and soft, and uh, was a dry cleaned only today. <laughs> Santa Claus, how did you get here? Like everybody else, I take a Dearborn streetcar, then I transfer to. Oh, the... please! Don't disillusion the child! Uh, Mama Mia, I forgot. <laughs> I, I come here just to buy a bicycle for Jimmy. Why? I've never seen such a Santa Claus! Manager? Where's the manager of this store? Uh, lady, please, I, I only try to help out. I want the manager. What's going on here? What is this? Uh, please, uh, it's all for uh, the little bambinos. Are you the manager, sir? That's right, and Mr. Grover. Is something wrong? Why, yes. What kind of a Santa Claus do you have in this store? Madam, I don't understand. How do you expect a child to believe in a Santa Claus that... that talks with an accent? Oh. I'm a sorry, lady. You come back the next year. I'm a gonna study real hard, and then there's gonna be a Santa Claus with a perfect English. Say, aren't you the fellow who was in my office? Uh, the other Santa Claus. Uh, he get excited and he goes away. Uh, so I said to myself, little kids, uh, they're gonna come to the store, but I no see Santa Claus. And what are they gonna tell him? A uh, Santa Claus that he's a uh, no lack of the place? He, he says it's a crummy? Well, I... <clears throat> uh, so I, I think, I think maybe I be Santa Claus till a new one shows up. But a Santa Claus speaking with a, with an accent? Please, it's not important to children how Santa Claus is speak. The only thing is a Santa Claus uh, is a make them happy. Is a Santa Claus nice and a fat? Is a Santa Claus to make a good promises? If a yes, everything is a fine and the children they are happy. Well, I... All right. Oh, okay, I, I take off a suit. I, I'm a sorry. Maybe I'm not a good Santa Claus because the first time I see him. In my country, there's a no, no called Santa Claus. In another country, is a mother star and a father star. In some places in Europe, is a Saint Nicholas. In Norway, is a Jolnitten, the naughty elf. But is it no make a difference to kids? I don't. <clears throat> I don't know what to say, Mr. Vasco. I. I. I'm sorry, sir. Maybe you don't believe in Santa Claus. I think I do, now. Mr. Basco, would you do me a favor and keep the uniform on until I can arrange to get a steady one from the agency? Of course you'll be paid. Oh, please, I'm not paid. Santa Claus, Santa Claus isn't no work. It's a pleasure. Well, then, let me repay your kindness. Please pick out any gift you want in the store. Oh, oh thank you. Is a one time when a Santa Claus get a present, no? <laughs> it's a Merry Christmas, Bambino. It's a Merry Christmas. Please, Mrs. Santa Claus, can you tell me a story? Uh, sure. It was a once a little boy named Jimmy O'Connor who got a bicycle for a Christmas. <laughs> So, Mama Mia, I'm a happy like a little boy because Santa Claus had taken care of Jimmy and give him a bicycle. Also, I'm a send a new package of canned food. Invite a whole family for Christmas dinner. It's a Luigi Bosco plan instead of a Marshall plan. <laughs> Maybe, Mama Mia, by next year I'll make enough money so you come here too. It's just so wonderful to be here all the year round, but especially wonderful now. If I could afford, I send a Christmas card to all wonderful people, and I say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, America of people. P.S. Your loving son, Luigi, the little immigrant. Be sure to listen next week at the same time over most of these stations when Luigi Vasco writes another letter to Mama Vasco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Highcraft and Cy Howard and stars J. Carol Nash as Luigi Vasco, Alan Reed as Pasquale. Music is directed by Wilbur Hatch. Maury Amsterdam's loose in his cafe a little later tonight on CBS. Maury Amsterdam, the bright comedy star of New York's nightclubs, not only takes you out front for the show, but also holds you backstage for the crazy difficulties he gets into running his radio nightclub. 
Their headaches were ruined for Maury, but fast and furious fun for you. So listen just a little later tonight when the Maury Amsterdam Show puts on another chapter in the misadventures of running a nightclub over most of these same CBS network stations. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Board. tell me from the real one. Daddy? Yes, dear? Don't you dress up and make believe that you're sent like last year. Boy, that was corny. Hmm. Alice, I still can't figure out how they knew it was me last year. What did I do that was wrong? Well, for one thing, you were supposed to come in singing Jingle Bells. I did? Yes, I know. But those lyrics, <laughs> I can still hear them. Ham hocks and turnip greens, they melt right in your mouth. A candy gams and hominy grits, and that's what I like about the South. Yeah! <laughs> you got more laughs than I did. What's so wrong about those lyrics? That isn't the way we sing it up north. Well, I can't help it if you Yankees don't know the right words. Oh, but Alice, I guess you're right. We're going to have to get somebody else to play Santa. I guess we will. Oh, and another thing, it's Christmas Eve. When are you going to get the tree? Oh, I bought that this afternoon. It's at the market. I didn't have room in my car to carry it, so I asked Willie to pick it up on the way over. Uh, we'll have the tree, but that's not what I'm worried about. Gee whiz, honey, who are we going to get to play Santa Claus? Oh, hey, wait a minute, Phil. I have an idea. Let's get Don Wilson to play Santa. Yeah! Old Fatso! He'll be great! Don is our man. I'll call him right now and see if he can come over tonight. Yeah, you go call him, huh? That's swell. Now the kids won't be disappointed. Sandy will show up. Oh, that must be Willie with the tree. Hiya, Curly. Well, if it ain't Francis the Red-Nosed Reindeer. 
Have an early go, huh? Merry Christmas, Remley. Merry Christmas, Curly. I got a present for you. Here it is. <gasps> for me? You got a present for little old curly-headed me? <laughs> yeah, I got you a little... Oh, Frankie, that's sweet of you. I, 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 I don't know what to say. Well, that's all right, Curly. But, but the thought, you don't know how I appreciate it. You, you, you don't know how this touches me deeply. And, well, if you're going to get sloppy about it, I'll take it back. Well, don't just stand there. Open it up. See what it is. <gasps> oh, gee, Frankie, just what I wanted. Tissue paper. The present's under the paper. Here it is. Why, it's a bottle. Not just a bottle. It's imported champagne. You bought a bottle of champagne for me? And gee whiz, it's almost half full. <laughs> they didn't have any splits, so I bought a magnum and siphoned it off. Where's Alice? Oh, she's inside. Call it Don Wilson. The kids go to see Santa Claus tonight, so we asked Don to play him for us. Why are you getting Don Wilson to play Santa? Who else am I going to get? You can stay out and see the real Santa. Yeah, but I don't know what time he's going to get. <laughs> can I have that again, Herman? Yeah. Why don't you let the kids see the real Santa Claus? Oh, kid, you better get some sleep. Staying up a little bit too late. So you're another one of those cynics, huh? A wise guy who don't believe? You do? Of course. Just because you've never seen him don't mean he's not there. You must realize, Curly, there are some things in life that are inexplicable. There exists certain psychic phenomena that are ethereal and beyond the comprehension of we mere mortals. Don't you agree? Oh, indubitably. Curly, you can take my word for it. The real guy will show up. I see him every Christmas. Remley, tell me. How come you see Santa Claus every Christmas and I don't? Well, Curly, I can best explain that by saying there are a lot of things that I see that you don't. Yeah, that I know, but I'm talking about Christmas, not New Year's Eve. <laughs> well, all I got to say is it's a good thing kids have more common sense and faith than some grown-ups. Or Christmas wouldn't be much fun. I know that tonight, old Saint Nick and his reindeer will come flying through the sky. Yeah. But you mind if we have somebody stand in in case he's grounded by a heavy smog over L.A.? All right, scoff if you will, infidel. Phil, Phil, I just called Don Wilson, and he can't make it, and I'm... Merry Christmas, Alice. Oh, hello, Frankie, Merry Christmas. As I was saying, Phil, Don can't make it, but he said he has a lot of other actor friends, and he'll send one of them over. Oh, Don, Don would have been perfect. Hey, Alice. It's none of my business, but why hire a phony Santa Claus when the kids are going to see the real one? Well, we just wanted to... What did he say, Phil? Well, pay no attention to him, honey. He hasn't been the same since he switched to yammy yogurt. <laughs> I don't understand you people. You seem to have lost the faith. You got the house decorated, lights outside, holly wreaths in the windows, and a beautiful Christmas... Wait a minute. Where's your Christmas tree? It's coming, it's coming. Just take your time. Willie's bringing it over. And if you don't think that I have the Christmas spirit, Remy, wait until you see that tree. Oh, it's a beauty. It better be. It is. Don't worry, Remy. It's about eight feet tall, and it's nice and full, and it's green. Uh-oh. That must be Willie with the tree now. Come in. Uh, Hi-ho, everyone, and a Merry Christmas. Hi-ho. Get a load of the vagabond liver. Well, I have the tree. Good, Willie. I'll, I'll go out to the car and help you carry it in. Oh, that won't be necessary. I have it right here in one of these bags. In a, in a bag? Well, how'd you get an eight-foot tree in a bag? Oh, I didn't get the eight-foot one. That was much too expensive. So instead, I purchased this two-foot table model. How do you like it? Willie... What kind of color is that? Shocking pink. Isn't it lovely? Oh, Willie, a shocking pink Christmas tree? Isn't that a little peculiar? Oh, on the contrary. On the contrary, dear. The man said that if you trim a shocking pink tree with the cerise ornaments and chartreuse bulbs, it will look positively scintillating. Well, la-dee-da. Oh, what do you know? What do you think of it, Philip? I'll give you three seconds to get that shredded locks out of here. 
Oh, brother, how much trouble can you have? No tree, and I'm worried about the guy down sending to play Sammy. Well, Philip, if you want someone to play the part, I shall be only too happy to portray Christopher Kringle. Christopher? Well, Donna, my blitzer. A fine Santa Claus you'd make. I'd make an excellent one. I'm quite an actor, you know. Hmm. I can see myself popping out of the chimney, bounding into the living room, and saying, Oh, 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 and a Merry Christmas to you little kiddies. And what do you wee darlings desire as a yuletide memento? Oh, well, thank you, Tallulah Bankhead. Uh, look, I'm sorry, Willow, we can't use you. It won't work. I can't do it. Well, if you don't want me to help, I won't. I have to run along anyway. I have to meet my girlfriend at the taxidermist. Well, I hope they did a good job on her. <laughs> Goodbye. Imagine that little squirt playing Santa Claus. Why, he couldn't impress me if he came in here with a bag full of sponsors. <gasps> oh, bag full of sponsors. Wouldn't that be beautiful? <laughs> oh, I hope that guy Don sent it over will make a good Santa, Remley. Curly, stop worrying about your make-believe Santa. The real one will be here. What we have to worry about is getting a decent tree. Oh, yeah. Uh, come on. Look, Remley, we'll uh, go over to the market and pick up the one I ordered. Hey, uh, we'll be back soon, Alice. Okay, dear. Gee, I hope the man Donna sending over looks the part. If he doesn't, the girls will think that... Mommy, it's getting late. When is Santa going to get here? <laughs> Gee, Mommy, do you think maybe he isn't coming? Oh, now, now, don't fret, girls. Of course he's coming. So... You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, checking it twice. Gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows if you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Everybody sing. He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's on his way. Seats. I'll get him to open up. Hey, Julius, open the door, Julius. Come on, we want to get it in. Hey, hurry it up, will you, kid? We can't wait all night. Come on, kid. Kid, open the door. I said open the door. It's open now. Stop punching me on the nose. What do you siblings want? We want a big treat. Who for? For Mr. Harris. Oh, well, what time's the hanging? Now, Julius, don't be a smarty pants. <laughs> Ooh, that's a jazzy piece of dialogue. Look, kid, we want to get that big Christmas tree I ordered here, I saw here this afternoon, and I ordered, I don't like the one you sold, Billy. Mr. Harris, I'm disappointed. I saved that tree for you. Shocking pink is your color. It matches your eyes. Oh, that's a catchy piece of dialogue. <laughs> well, look, I want the big one I saw this afternoon. Okay, come in the back, and I'll get it for you. No, all right. Come on, Remy, you can help. I'll wait here at the counter, Curly. Remley, get your clipping bits off that cash register. Is that what this is? I thought it was a spinet piano. I was trying to play White Christmas. Remley, now get away from there and help us carry the tree out to the car. Where is it, Julius? Right here. Oh, right. That's the one. And thanks for saving it for me, kid. That's okay. Merry Christmas, Mr. Harris. Same to you. Oh, oh, Julius, uh, by the way, drop over at the house a little later. We got a little something for you. Uh, come over there, huh? 
Uh, all right now, uh, come on, Remley, let's take this tree home and get it trimmed. Yeah. There, that's the last ornament. Oh, gee, the tree looks pretty. It sure does. How do you like it, Curly? Oh, it looks swell. But where's the guy who's supposed to play Santa Claus? He's supposed to be here by 10, and it's after 11 now. And Frankie, what have you got there? Milk and cookies for Santa Claus. I put them on the mantle for him every year. Milk and cookies? That old man's been working like a dog tonight. Leave him something more nourishing, like a beer and a couple of pretzels. <laughs> Don't be a funny drummer. I'll put the milk and cookies over the fireplace. There. Where are the kids, Alice? Oh, they're upstairs, waiting for Santa. Well, everybody's waiting. When's this guy gonna show up? Be patient, Curly. He's got a long trip from the North Pole. Besides, his reindeer ain't as young as they used to be, and his oh, sleigh must be quiet. Hard. The least Don's friend can do is get here on time. This subterfuge is all so unnecessary. Uh oh, that must be Sandy now. I'll let him in. Go on, I'll go with you, honey. Christmas Santa Claus! Oh, 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 oh! Merry Christmas! Hiya, Philzy! Hey, Andy, what are you doing here? Well, Don Wilson told me you were looking for somebody to play Santa Claus. He said you wanted somebody with a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> Is my bowl big enough? Yeah, yeah, and in fact, it's the biggest one I've seen since the Rose Bowl. <laughs> hey, Andy, that's quite a figure you got yeah, there. Yeah, sexy, ain't it? You know, I think I look charming in this Santa Claus outfit. Charming, he said. Where'd you get that messy red suit? It's got spots all over it. I rented it. The Santa Claus I had last year was a sloppy eater. I think he looked ridiculous. Get a load of that white beard. Where'd you rent that moth-eating thing? Well, that I didn't rent. I was playing Tanassa with Monty Woolley and I won it. Of course, if you don't like me as Santa Claus... Pay no attention to him, Andy. I think you make a wonderful Santa Claus. And I do too. The girls will get a big kick out of this. I'll call them. Uh, and Andy, try to convince the children you're really Santa Claus, huh? The children? Phil, yeah, I thought I was doing this for your benefit. <laughs> no, 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 Andy. But gee whiz, it's swell of you to play Santa Claus for my two kids, and, and I'd like to pay you for it. Oh, no, I don't want any money for this, Phil. But if, if you want to buy me a little something for Christmas... Like what? Oh, anything Alice can afford. <laughs> okay, Andy. Now, it's up to you to make the kids think that you're Santa. This impersonation is preposterous. Santa Claus won't like it. Besides, you'll never be able to fool the kids. Oh, I don't know. With this costume and bag of toys over my shoulder, I shouldn't have any trouble. No, I don't think so either. Andy, but gee whiz, it'd be awful if you don't fool them. If there was just one kid, someone we could try you out on to see if you could food could be food. Mr. Harris, where are you? Can you get my present? Julius, that's just the kid we need. Hey, come on in here, Julius. Look, Andy, if you could fool this kid, you could fool anybody. Oh, don't worry, Phil. I'll just sit here in this chair and you can watch his face when he sees me. <laughs> okay, Andy. I certainly hope that he's going to do that. What do you want, Mr. Harris? I can't even get my... Hey, Mr. Harris, don't you feel a little chilly? No, why? You left your red flannels lying on a chair. I'm not red flannels. Don't you recognize me, Sonny? You look familiar. Well, I'll give you a hint. I'm the jolly old man with the white beard. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, ho. Well, if it ain't bloated Gabby Hayes. He ain't Gabby Hayes. <laughs> now, look, he's wearing a red suit, and he's got a beard. What is it? A Bolshevik. What's he got over his shoulder? A bag full of bombs? Julius, don't be silly. Don't you recognize Santa Claus when you see him? This is Santa Claus? That's right, Sonny. I'm old Saint Nick. They can't do this to us little kids. In the name of juvenile humanity, I protest this flame of disregard for us. Oh, shut up. <laughs> now sit on my lap and tell me what you want for Christmas. Or I'll sit on, or I'll sit on your lap and break every bone in your precious little body. Get away from me, you imposter. You. You're nothing but a fake. Which looks to the real Santa tonight. He ain't gonna like it when I'm telling him he's being impoisonated by some grapple voice schnook. <laughs> now there goes a cute kid, Santa. <laughs> he has all the charm of a wet cigar. <laughs> I told you, you can't fool kids. Oh, Remley, that don't mean nothing. He's just a wise little kid. Besides, he's older than my kids. When the girls come down, they won't know the difference. Now come along, children. He's right in here. 
Well, <laughs> there he is. Gee, Santa Claus! Hello, Santa. Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas! And don't forget my new television series of Wild Bill Hickok starting soon. Oh, oh, oh! Fine, Santa Claus. He's got to get a plug in. Well, come here, children, and sit on my lap. Which one? You got three of them. Well, sit on the one with the knees. Girls, how do you like old Santa? We like you fine, Santa, but what happened to your voice? Do you have a cold? Yeah, you see, they, uh, they raised my rent at the North Pole and I moved into a leaky igloo. Well, old Santa asked me to go an hour. Uh, here are your toys, girls. Thank you, Santa. Yeah, thanks. Well, I'll be seeing you next year. Merry Christmas and all, and uh, to all a good night. Up Dancer, up Prancer, up Myrtle, Rob Clyde, ho, ho, ho! Hey, 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 come back here, Santa. You forgot Irving. <laughs> well, children, what did you think of Santa Claus? I thought he was Devon. I thought he was Andy. You mean you kids knew that was Andy Devine? Sure, but we didn't want to say anything and hurt his feelings. Daddy, when is the real Santa coming? Well, uh... Look, kids, you see... He'll be here soon. Oh, Frankie. Look, kids, uh, he may get here too late. So, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you a Christmas story, and then, will you run off to bed? Well, all right, Daddy. But we wanted so much to see him. I know you did, kids, but, well, maybe next year. Now, sit on my lap, and I'll tell you a beautiful Christmas story. You ready? It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children, I, I thought I had sleigh bells. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced through their heads. Alice, what are those bells? What? Quiet, Curly. Phyllis, look! In the fireplace! It's Santa Claus! The real one! But Merry Christmas, Santa. Frankie, who are you talking to? I don't see anybody. The kids do? Look at them. Gee, Santa, we knew you'd come. They couldn't fool us with any make-believe Santa. We are waiting just for you. Oh yes, we've been very good, girls. Oh, what a lovely dollhouse. Thank you. And all these are for me? Can I open them now? All right, Santa. We'll wait till morning. Thank you very much. And a Merry Christmas to you, Santa. Of course we'll tell them. Merry Christmas, and goodbye, Santa. I told you you'd show up, Curly. But Frankie, I... I don't get it. I heard it, but I didn't see it. Of course you didn't. He's sure a nice-looking old gent. Alice, did, did, did you see him? I... Uh, I'm not sure, Phil. I almost thought I saw him standing by the fireplace. But Alice, how could it be if he was standing there? Phil, what are you staring at? The mantle. Alice, the milk and cookies, the god. Folks, this is Phil. I want to thank Andy Devine for doing such a wonderful job for us. Thanks, Andy. As always, you were great. Ladies and gentlemen, a few weeks ago, I made a record called The Thing. And because you liked it, it became a hit. And that was a big thrill for me. But it didn't compare with the thrill I got when The Thing gave us the idea for The Thing for Kids for Christmas. 
the Thing for Kids campaign to give needy children toys to make this Christmas real for them it had been a huge success. And you've done it. You've made it possible for millions of children to wake up tomorrow morning to enjoy their happiest Christmas. Thank you for that. By giving generously, yours truly, you made, you made a truly a Christmas thing. And now on behalf of Alice and my children and my cast, my writers, my producer, my whole company, let me wish you a very merry and rewarding Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Santa Claus join us? Yes? Good. Keep your eye out and he'll come back, well, certainly uh, for Christmas Eve. That's where he's supposed to be here. But of course, we've got a whole wonderful, exciting year planned with lots of wonderful shows, including our next show, which will be February 16th. And we're going to be doing a tribute to women who could change the world and change the laws. Uh, some really exciting stories from actual history moments uh, about women changing the laws of the country. So, uh, be sure to join us on February 16th, Sunday, right here at the Oak Park Arms. And now, the cast of those thrilling days of yesteryear, Pam Turlo, <laughs> Amy Kennedy, <laughs> Cooper Nelson, <laughs> Ella Nelson,